Hi Year 2, this is it, it's our last session of English home learning. Hopefully we won't ever have to do this again, we can be at school as normal from now on and that'll be that. So it's our last session, but that doesn't mean like, I want you to stop this um, from today. I want you to carry on and work still really, really hard. I still want to see these emails coming in with your work for instructions on there today. So what are instructions? I'm going to give you five seconds to tell your grown up what are instructions. Maybe I'll give you a little bit longer actually because that's quite a hard question. So 10 seconds, what are instructions? So Okay, and back you come then. So instructions are, they are a step-by-step -step guide to help us to do something. Why do we give instructions? I wonder if you can tell your grown-up that one. That's quite a hard question as well. Why do we give instructions? I'll give you 10 seconds again. Like, well, we give instructions all at all times. If we want somebody to do something specific for us, or if someone asks us how to do things or to assemble things, we read instructions, etc. So we should always be given instructions before the task that we want to do. So that when we do this task-based activity, it can go well and smoothly. A bit like us teachers, we're always giving you instructions so that you can complete a task smoothly. Even our inputs, like these are instructions because it's telling you what to do. Be careful though, instructions are not the same as commands. So for example, get some water, commands are short and tell us we have to do something. Fetch the water and dip it on the fire to put it out. Instructions are not telling us we have to do it, but they're telling us how or why we should do things. So for example, we've got how to wrap a present. Uh, oh, sorry, instructions should be quite short, but not as short as a command. So we could say, how to wrap a present, unroll the wrapping paper with pattern facing down, put the gift on the paper, and make sure there's enough room to cover all the sides, top and bottom. Okay, or we've got to follow the instructions to colour the gingerbread man in. I can't read these instructions very well because they came out very small. But it says, colour the buttons of the gingerbread man on the left, black. And then it says something else. I think it says black blue actually, because he's got blue buttons on. It says color the rest of the gingerbread man on the left. Um, brown, I think. Or we could use instructions to tell us how to play a game. So there are different types of instructions. We have instructions for recipes. We have instructions for computer games for craft things and craft books, telling us how to make things. We might have gardening guides and science experiments, sports games and safety rules. So thinking about it, what instructions would you give to the people of London during the Great Fire? Do you know what I would give an instruction for the people after the Great Fire of London? Because I think that building their houses of wood probably wasn't the most sensible thing to build. So I would suggest that they build their houses from bricks. I might say, um, I maybe that's not an instruction, that's just a piece of advice, but if I was going to tell them how to do it, I could say place, place one brick next, next to another to start building a wall. Start building, oops, building the wall. I could say, um, Oh, I know what I could give. One instruction I could give, it would be to Tom Farriner, and that would be telling him how to put a fire out. I could say, make sure, 
make sure you put the water water on the fire. So it's not a command, it's not telling him he has to do it, but it's advising him to say, actually, it might be a good idea if you put the water on the fire. Maybe he put the water somewhere else, and maybe that's why the fire didn't go out. So steps to success today, you're going to be writing in the present tense. So the present tense is you're writing as though it's happening now. Use those imperative verbs. Okay, so we do still need to use some imperative verbs. I think I put, oh, I put place one. Place is an imperative verb. Make sure you put, there's that imperative verb there, okay? So you use those imperative verbs. You could use those time connectives. So what I could say on this one here, make sure you put the water on the fire. Then I could say to make it a time connective. Next, ensure, there's my imperative verb, ensure the fire is completely, completely out before you go to bed. Before you, you go to bed. Okay, so that is it. That is the end of our home learning for our English. I can't wait to see all these simple instructions. Remember, keep them simple. I don't want big, long, complicated instructions. I want some simple instructions, some short sentences again. Have lots of fun, everybody. And I will see you on Monday. I can't wait. I'm so excited. See you then.